levels and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance Hello everybody, welcome to A Week at Hibs from Long Bangers in association with Leith Spirits and that was longer than it needed to be. Uh, I'm Matty. Hello, I'm Colin. Hello, I'm John. And still in the barbershop quartet. Uh, so this is our subscriber uh, episode, Week at Hibs. If you're not a subscriber, you get a, a week after it goes out to, uh, to our subscribers. So thanks for subscribing if you're hearing it uh, immediately. Um John, we've, we've had a busy week at, 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 at Hibs this week for the changes. Instead of scrabbling around for news, we've got quite a lot going on. Uh, we're not going to talk about the defeat to Rangers because we've just recorded long bangers and it's covered extensively there. I'm going to say extensively. It's uh, a rushed half hour as that gets through talking points, but it's covered. So we'll not, we'll not be talking about that too much. We might talk about how the new players uh, signed. Uh, you're up first, John, with the news. We've got some players in. Tell us about that. Aye, so the famous the famous signing pen has made a, a reappearance in the last. I'm trying to think how long ago it was that Maud Leader signed, but I think he was announced it on Twitter with a, a SpongeBob meme, and he was opening up a suitcase under the sea to reveal the pen. And later in the week, or more recently, I think it was announced Hibs have maybe started up a a WhatsApp channel, and they yes. were announcing a few signings on there. So the three signings this week have been Emily. I'm hopefully not going to butcher their names, but Emiliano Marcond, Mizian Maulida, and Luke Amos. Uh, more recently, who's joined us from? Well, I think he was out of contract, but more yeah, most recently at QPR. So, I I wanted to get your thoughts on those three players. What you saw for them without talking about the defeat last night to Rangers, what you saw from them in last night's game and how you think that they might affect the Hibs squad, the Hibs lineup uh, throughout the rest of the season. So if we, if we start with uh, Mizian Mayalida, um he had a, like a, a big pedigree, didn't he? Like he had €14 million Euros worth of transfers behind him. At one point, I think his contract had a €100 million Euro release clause in it, uh, which was mentioned... He made his debut last night playing through the middle uh, alongside Vente. Um, Colin, what were your first impressions? Um, it, I thought he looked big. Like, it, it, I thought he looked... I didn't think he looked... I was saying it earlier on. I didn't think he looked unfit. I just think he's maybe lacking that sharpness. I'd be interested to see when he is match sharp. I guess they're chucking him in to get him match sharp. Mm-hmm. Because that's the only reason you would normally they bring you off the bench and all that, eh? But... Um, because it did look like Venny was going to be further up the pitch when he was when he was there and he was doing the, the running about a bit. Um, I think he should have scored. It's a pity he never, because it obviously he could knock the confidence in and the longer that goes on for the, the worst the worst situation it can get. And came up the fans are like, eh, hey, fuck that, then it's no scored, it's no scored, it's no scored. Do you know what I mean? And it'll build, it'll build, it'll build. So it'd be good for him to get off the map. Um, like Venny did. Like, because then he got the goals at the start and he doesn't get criticised now even though he doesn't score. Mm-hmm. Because uh, cause he scored early. So I think it's important for him to score early. But I thought he looked all right. It's hard to say. Like, they're playing against one of the best teams in the league. And you've chucked him in. Yeah. Not much fit. So I don't know. I don't I... know what to judge yet. I've got a better idea on Saturday, I think. I thought he had that footballer's build that I, I touched on before with Milotnikov with the footballer's arse. He just looks to have that sort of stature about him. He looks physical, eh? He looks, mm. uh, he looks a better machine. Just kind of tall, but without being Matt Macy gangly and built without being stocky, like, you know, still being mobile. I was expecting it to be more on the ball. I don't know. I don't know where that expectation came from. Whether it's like kind of watching his YouTube highlight deals, but I think it's the match sharpness is a massive thing. They get up to up to speed in the game. I think the Scottish game is quicker than it gets uh, credited for uh, as well, and it's tougher than than folk give it credit for as well. I think people come to Scotland expecting yeah. quite a you know an easy time at, but and just to be physical, but it's not just physical. Um, I bet I think we probably need to see him after a few games in and kind of get a get a view on what he's like but uh, do you think he'll be for the rest of the season do you think he'll maybe be the natural replacement for say Dodge or a a Venti partner up top 
It's a good question, John, because I don't know, because when Emiliano came on, he he partnered uh, Deutsch up front, so they effectively they swapped the two um, the two players around, and I don't know, it, it, would it be Mercond and uh, my leader that will play up front and then Venti drops out? I, I, I don't know like how, how they'll, they'll do it, and you've still got Boyle and Yuan and uh, potentially Jair if, to fit into that McCurdy if he's still around. Um, I mean, at the club, like... Um, so I, I I don't know I don't know what is if that's going to be his his uh, his favoured position or not. But I, I didn't uh, he didn't look like a player that had fourteen million euros worth of transfers behind him. I didn't think I I, I thought he would have. No, but looked... no, but then he get then he let that be right because he we spoke about this on whatever fucking night extra time night Monday night that. Uh, he sold for that amount of money. He had that amount of release clause. He's no sign of a hibs if he's going to fucking up. Correct. I totally get it. I didn't think, also think he looked lazy. I mean, that was like the thing. There was. It's funny. There was a wee laddie that was sitting on for me. He was turning his hands. Which one's the lazy one? Uh, <laughs> yeah, was like, head, yeah. Aye, but, but it was reported, wasn't it? The the Hertha manager had, had said it was yeah. the laziest player he'd ever worked with. Uh, and I certainly didn't think he looked lazy. I didn't want to be too hard on the boy. I just. I, I, it, not, didn't I, look it was lazy. like a a, a a debut that was neither here nor there. He tried send it back way back onto the Uri eighteen yard line at one point. So like he wasn't being lazy, so um, Hopefully hopefully with uh, Montgomery's track record of taking these players, these kind of wandering souls, if you like, and, and reinvigorating them is something that he can do for my leader at Hibs and we can t- start to see that the see justification that. for those release causes and what have you. See that wee perception or myth or whatever it is about that. How many players has he done that with? Jason Cummins, is, is there others? Aye, there were others in the team. Like, there was a boy that was playing, I think, like uh, non league Australian football. Again, he was just kicking about part time and he picked him up and it might have been his captain. Right. And, and then I, I, I might be completely fucking wrong. One of our Australian listeners will, will be able to keep me right. But there, there was a, when I read about it when, he, when it was first coming in, there was a few examples that they gave. It wasn't just Cummins that, that hmm. was the, uh, like the benchmark for it. There, there, there were other examples within that team. Right. Hopefully he starts doing it. Yeah, sure. But did, did we know a sign came uh, like when we got picked up go back like a long time, Consozi and Latape, were they no unattached when we, we signed them? Oh Latape was at a <laughs> it's weird that I know this, but I'm sure Latape was at a side called Bellinenses in Portugal and I forget where Sozi was. I don't know if Sozi had been at like Montpellier or something. But I mean Sozi was definitely kind of towards the end of his career. I don't know if he'd fallen out of favour or whatever, but he had a, a massive pedigree. Mm-hmm. And I think Latapi had maybe, I don't know if he was out of contract or whatever. I forget the exact circumstances of uh, their signings. But it was. I, just, I mean, they were talking about bringing them in for a trial. Same with Boozy. When Boozy came in for a, like, we, I think it was Le Havre that, that, we, yeah. um, that we signed him from, but he was available for us to be, you know, to bring him in on our trial, at, at least to, to kind of pick him up. So I don't think we paid a fee for him. There's definitely players like that that are out there. If you if you've got the like the knowledge of the uh, the players and the contacts and stuff, and I think that was uh, Montgomery said that he was able to kind of get these players through through contacts that he had. So uh, I, I guess we'll we'll see. Well, but, if but, nothing um, else, sorry, my, my point was going to be about managers describing someone as lazy. So I've had people that would describe me as being lazy, but it's just people that I didn't want to work for because I didn't enjoy their. I didn't enjoy their management style, for example. So if Montgomery has the right style and with his uh, support, his backroom staff, Raimundo, like it's been well documented how many languages he speaks and the, the sort of cultural barriers that can help overcome, that might put him in a better position than any other manager, for example, mm-hmm. to get the best out of my lead out of Hibs. Uh, and then it's, we'll come on to the cold pasta uh, next. Uh, in the <laughs> um, what did you make of his debut last night? Similar to what you were describing about Mo, uh, in fact, it was maybe in the previous episode, but you described him as being not, what was the word he used? It wasn't rushed, or was it busy? Like, what uh-huh. get, wanted to get on the ball. And the other thing that I picked up for him, again, was his, like that, that football and stature that he had about him. And I don't know why that sticks out for me. I think it might just be because I'm so used to, you look at like the Scottish game and the players that tend to populate the Scottish game, and then you look down south and you go, fuck, they're, they're just different athletes. Mm-hmm. And I think we got in those two, we've got athletes, and I think he's 
I thought you could see glimpses of his ability on the ball, albeit it was kind of tempered a little bit by the fact that he's not properly played football for a while. I didn't. I know that um, we'll come on to him in a minute. Amos has been out for a wee bit because he's had a few injuries. I think I read that Marcond has been out for a wee bit with an injury, but I wasn't sure about the details of that. Aye, I so he bench at the weekend. Yeah, yeah, he had been injured for a long time, and he was on the bench yeah. uh, at the weekend for uh, for Bournemouth. So I'm not sure what the injury was um, off the top of my head. But how, how did you view his performance, uh, Colin? And actually, what are your thoughts on the signing in general? Uh, well, it's an exciting signing, but I'd, I'd... I thought he was all right. I, I, he came on it. We were getting beat. Like they were, they were sort of training game pace at the time. He, he did a couple of nice touches. Gave the ball away a couple of times as well. Though, so, I he, he looked busy, like you said. Um, but I didn't. I, I'm no. I didn't get me out my seat. Like so we'll see when he I, when he gets a proper run at. It. It's why I, I I thought he looked a player. Like that was my my first impression that he looked. Like I say, I think you could have put him in the Rangers team and no weakened it. Um, and he nearly scored. Do you know he had the, the chance where he's, he's mm. run at the Rangers player in the in the box and, and got round him? And I think the keepers made a save or the defenders made a block on the uh, on, on the shot. But it was. I think it looked like, like, like he tried to. It looked like he was trying to shape to bend it round him with his right foot, but maybe got caught in two minds about what to do. Yeah. It looked like he hesitated a bit, I think, for memory, but I thought he'd done, aye, it was a good bit of play, but I didn't think the finish was brilliant. Like, so, aye, I think, aye, I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful for him, I'm not trying to be too negative, I just, I know the danger is, like, so, what, get talking about excited. Aye. And then we'll all yeah. be hammering him in a couple of weeks' time when he's not scored yet, or overhead I th- kicked one again. I tell you what I liked about him, was, so it was that, uh, the, the, the business and wanting to make something happen, but he didn't look... Like he was bothered about who he was up against. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, like he was not going for oh, fucking hell. It's like this, this is a better I, team than us. I need to watch you. Like, get rid of the boys as soon as I get it. I know what like, you mean. Oh, fuck, he's going to play. Like, I agree with that. Totally agree with that. I know what you mean. I was just going to take a, a Colin stance and temper that a little bit when I was reading about the. So you mentioned the cold past the comments on the same interview. He mentioned going up against a great side like Rangers, and I thought, well, was it the kind of like the European night for him? Will he put in that same type of performance against, say, Kilmarnock at the weekend? Cold, cold, uh, cold start. Uh, aye, so, so aye, we, we, we might see that, but I, I think this is... So if you look at the type of signings we might be making going forward, or the type of signings that we've, we've got there, right? So Amos has played at a decent level. You look at where Rangers pick up players for, like, Campbell was one of their best players, and I think McCond had played them, like, in, his, in, in the same team. Uh, I think they were a bit... Um, who right? So he went to Bournemouth. Was it for Brentford that he was at before he went to uh, to Bournemouth. I think they might have been in the same team. I'm sure he referenced them as like a former team teammate. So if you see them and you go right, well, he's obviously like the comparable levels, and that's one of Rangers' best players. Like if we're signing players like that, then we shouldn't really be like over time. We should be able to compete with them. No, talking about winning the league or fuck all like that. But in a, like a one-off game, if you've got enough of those players in your team, that you're looking at the opposition saying. I don't know, right? They're not going, fucking hell, it's Todd Cantwell, I, I'm not as good as him. I have a decent chance. Yeah, no, I think that's a decent point because when you look at, say, Tavernier, for example, the, well, they call him the Blue Cafu, it's the, the penalty king. Um, I forget where it was that he came from, but if you see his career prior to joining Rangers, I'm sure he looked a bit like a journeyman footballer. Mm-hmm. He was all over the shop. And if that, like you say, like if that's the sort of area that they're getting their players from and we're picking up the same, you've got to think, well, we're going to be in a bit of a better shout at getting victories against them. Aye. Uh, and and uh, Luke Amos was the last one. He, he came on for the last part of the, uh, the game. He's been training with Tottenham's under-23s, having uh, been, not, I suppose, released by QPR. They never renewed his contract uh, as he was injured. Um, what, what do you think of the signing in general, John? In general, I think I'm all right with it. So it's the, it's the on-paper, on-the-pitch thing. Um, on paper, so he's come through Spurs Academy, um, seemed to have a few uh, decent match reports, and then he's had a bad knee injury. He's come back for that, he's got a QPR, he's had a good few match reports, he's had an injury, and they've done, I think QPR have done the holding up the strip thing, like come back soon. Um, and he's found himself, it was possibly because of how Colin described it, it's kind of like 
try to find his way back into the game, try to put himself back in the shop window again. I'm hopeful because the I think the academy in England tends to, or sorry, the, the various academies tend to produce good footballers. And hopefully we get to see that here. The wee bit of concern that I've got is the the two cruciate ligament injuries that he's had and how much that tempers his natural game. And uh, Colin, the, 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 that signing was well received. And we talked about uh, Hibs and, uh, and, and hyping up signings. I think Hibs hyped up massively, but there was definitely like a, like a proper buzz when it was getting announced. Like you said, the WhatsApp channel had, uh, was it mentioned it, John? The, the WhatsApp channel had, had said, uh, you know, watch this space kind of thing, and you knew that the signing was coming. Um, is there a risk that we, we put a lot of hype on a boy's shoulder who's not played competitive football all season? Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure where, where the hype came from because it, it, it felt to me like we were signing him because we need a midfielder. Mm-hmm. He's out of contract. It's not like we're, we're going and that, you know, it was it was almost like oh, he's, he's available. Just sign him. And, and it's a danger of being, it's like because he's come for English football or something. I don't know. It's like, oh, fucking hell, he must be good because look, he, said, he was at Tottenham as a laddie and that. Hope, hopefully he can be good. And and hopefully he's only he, he's only struggled to get a club because he had these injuries that John mentioned, um, and and he can he can come back. I can't think we can judge him on last night though because he came on no. it. Was it not three 0 when he came on? It might have been. It wasn't kicking ass off it, and it wasn't. I'm not judging him on that at all. I'm not even going to try and uh, yeah. say it. But I just think I just think back to recent times when McCarthy got signed because he got signed on transfer deadline day, and, like. It was hyped up to fuck. So he was only ever going to feel. Aye. Uh, on, on paper, it looks like a good sign. And obviously, with all of them, you want to see them come in and shine. That's the uh, that's the hope. I, I just well, I, 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 on paper are cracking signings. Aye. <laughs> I didn't want to piss on anyone's chips, but it's just when, when, when I saw yeah. when I saw the reaction, I was like, what? It's maybe just because kind of I did a kidney player as well. Maybe if I had like, a better knowledge of... Uh, the championship in England or, or whatever, I would yeah. say, like, oh, mind that, that boy Amos, he was fucking cracking and uh, kind of wonder what happened to him, but we've signed him and we've picked up a right good one here. I think maybe yeah. if I had that, that knowledge, maybe that's where the reaction's coming. Some folk that, like do remember him for, for when he was uh, playing and, and know we've got, a, like, we've won a watch with him. So I hope that's the the, the case. Uh, Colin, you want to talk, tell us about some players that have uh, left the club? Uh, so the, there's, there's quite a few went out this week. Um, so I don't think... So tell me if you're bothered about any of them going. Right, we've got Emmanuel Johnson uh, going. Riley Harbottle is about on loan to Colchester, I think. Max Boric, the keeper, is about our growth. Uh, Del Ferri is about a Czech Republic team. Yes, yep. is. And uh, today was rumoured that. Um, well, I think it was rumoured today, but it was also the talk of the talk of the sweets last night that Jago's going back to Australia. Um, and there's there's rumours of a couple of others. Uh, maybe leaving as well, who we could probably speculate on, but it's, uh, I would, well, we could, I, I would think Dodge might try and look for a team, and I would imagine the Cubby might get plenty of it on loan or something, because all we're signing is players in these guys' position, mm-hmm. and they're just moving further and further down the list. Especially with Boyle to come back as well. So, John, I suppose the, the standout name for there um, that, that you know, most folk will be anxious about leaving would have been Emmanuel Johnson. Yeah, I, I think that's a massive loss for the club. <laughs> sorry, million, I'm sorry. A million dollar release clause, and he's. Yeah, I, I, he, I'm, um, I'm laughing. I didn't mean it to be. I didn't mean it to be patronising towards. No, him. I set you up for we, that. To be fair, John, when we talked about it on extra time a wee while ago, I think we were all unanimous in agreement that we didn't even realise he was still at the club. <laughs> Just because he'd, he'd, he'd sort of come in and there was the link up with Charleston Battery and then he just kind of, he was away again and we never really saw him. In fact, I was surprised to see when we, we released him that there was pictures of him in, in Hibs gear because I never realised that he'd actually appeared for us or trained with us or anything. I mean, but, so, I don't want to spend too much time on him, eh? but it's a bit harsh. Because <laughs> we've never seen the No, I, I, I can't, I just, I really did it for um, a cheap laugh, go on, to be fair. I only, I only <laughs> as always. the same reason, right? <laughs> Um, but Boric away in loan, I guess that means that they've got Wallacott to come back and they've still got Mary Johnson kicking about, we don't need four goalies. Was there, uh, were there no rumours about Wallacott going away as well? Well, so? there was a rumour, there was one rumour that I've seen in a group chat, I've not seen any, yeah, reported anybody else. Nothing reliable? No, 
Right. And then Del Ferry, he's away on loan as well. He was in the, he was in the other team. Um, and, and I don't know what position he is. He's played right back, but I think people said he was a midfielder. Midfielder, I played, played midfield more often. Uh, and then I suppose the one that, that's questionable, but then the only reason it's questionable is because of last night. We're, we only had one set of half available, and we sent one away on one days before it. Which probably suggests that the rumours of another deal being nearly done that fell through Aye. actually were the case. There was, um, well, Montgomery said that he he thought we'd signed a, a centre half in the last week, um, yeah. which Hibs have kept quiet. This Hibs have been quite good at keeping these quiet up to a point, eh? Like there's there's been a few, yep. like the Amos one was was a bit more uh, public, but the the other ones have sort of kind of come out of nowhere. Um, in the centre half, the, like I can't remember hearing many folk mentioning that we'd signed a centre half or were but about to sign one. Um, yeah. And he says, sort of, it's the club decided last minute to keep him. It maybe felt last night that we should have been the one that decided to keep our centre half, so that we had two recognised ones for the uh, for, for the game. Although, like, we should have been that. Maybe we found selfish. the beatest position. Mm. Maybe. You really um, enjoyed not having to bomb up and doing that left hand side chasing Tavares throughout the game. Harbot was Sorry. interesting when, like, uh, again, like he was brought in. Uh, by Johnson, as as was like a uh, well, what was was that's just a rumor. But um, he's no no really had a an opportunity. To have, uh, I know there's an argument to get opportunity every day in training to show that he should be starting. But the back four's shuffled about a few times, and he's no really kind of featured. So it's not that much a surprise that he's going out. But it does make you wonder why we signed him in the in the first place. Yes. I don't. Yes. I don't think there's any real surprises on the ones that are out, other than Harbottle because of the position we found ourselves in. But it's maybe more interesting to see who, because these are the ones that are maybe in the squad, but very much in the periphery. But now, if we're getting into Jagos and that, then it's people that are playing a lot of minutes. That's the that will be more interesting to see who goes, because even if it is Dodge that goes, he's he's played a lot of minutes this season as well. As as is Jago, I could know, but. I, McCurdy probably needs to go play. Aye. He definitely Don't does. Uh, Jago, so Jago was one that split the support. Wasn't it? Like, really, there was there was folk who rated him and folk who didn't rate him from, uh, from day one, and some opinions shifted as things go on, which is good, because you would... Obviously, it's good to change your opinion if new information becomes available and all that kind of thing. Do you, do you think this is like... I would phrase this question. I think Montgomery haven't had a chance to kind of properly assess the the squad. He's been quite ruthless, like you said. Yeah, Colin Jago's played a decent amount of minutes. These are like players, or or he's a player in there. Same with Doidge. If if Doidge on his way out, that have featured quite heavily this season when they've been available. For him to just be going right, we're going to move them on, and we've got quite a few players out of contract. Do you think this is like a proper rebuild from uh, Montgomery that we're we're seeing the the early stages of. Well, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, at the moment, it's, it's the it's not been that level of player that's played a lot of minutes. I think that he has he has plenty of time to assess them though, which was a which was one of the positives of him coming in when he came in, um, and at least we're seeing some movement now because obviously when we previously through the window, eh, the Dubai break and that we were like, "What's fuck all happening?" Like, which which was was a worry, but now we're getting there's quite a lot of players going out, and there's three came in. So, and, and rumours of a few more uh, before the end of the window so hopefully he's getting a chance I don't think he's assessed Diego and I Diego did split the fans but I don't think the style that he wants to play has ever got to shoot Diego because it needs to be feel as we're running a bit like fuck mm-hmm. and that's not, never been that was never going to be Diego's game it was going to be sitting behind two other ones or sitting in a defensive two kind of it was to cover it up yeah. and play up and just get rid of the ball as soon as he gets it like five yards sideways, um, and and that was that was what he was here to do, and and that's not what that that formation allows. It's interesting, eh? Like I, I quite like that. I think we spoke about like the uh, on extra time another week, calling about the five years. Like, what's the difference in and how we're doing, and and it wasn't really that much of a difference. It does feel the now that uh, I think we're going to bingo territory here. John, 
can see you getting the bingo pen. We stamp are ready for it. There's more and more people talking. This happened at the end of Johnson's time, and you can see it coming. We'll talk about kind of no feeling connected to the club and uh, sick of the, the players, and you know this, it's a culture problem and all these kind of things. It does feel like the team that we're watching now has reached the end of its cycle, if you like. Do you know, like the, the, it needs to, to kind, of, kind of go and say, right, we're going to start a new start like a new team, but, but have that, like, we're going to properly freshen up. It's not going to be one or two here and there. We're going to do like a, a proper bit of surgery on the team and, and, and raise the calibre of, of player that we've got. Uh, do you think that's a fair thing to say, John? I think so. I think back to like the one thing that people have asked for for quite a while is like a, is a proper clear out, and they they talk about like the the old guard like Hanlon Stevenson etc. And I think the last time that we had like a proper clear out was post Butcher when we were first division and it was kind of well publicised that we were doing like five players so that was a proper rebuild that was Stubbs and oh god I forget the boy's name now the boy that went running down the touchline Dylan and the cut Dylan John Dylan yeah. So that was them coming in and, and rebuilding the squad from scratch. And they went through a period of, and they kind of like tinkered and performed a bit of surgery with the squad and whatever. And since then, what we've had, like post stubs, we got Lennon in and we had a, a we got out of the championship. Mm-hmm. We had a sort of middling ish first period under Lennon and then it really took off after the, the January transfer window. That was one where the January transfer window actually worked really well for us. But after that, we've had. Fuck it! I'm not even going to bother reeling off the, the the managers, but it's it's led us to where we are today. But you don't get. I don't think we are able to have the clear out that's required without, say, for for argument's sake, being relegated. That requires like the club to kind of look at itself and go, "Holy shit! How do we find ourselves in this sort of situation? We need to start moving players on." If you don't, if you don't have that opportunity, well, how do you approach it? And it might be just that kind of constant evolution of someone like Montgomery coming in and saying, "Well, these are the players that I've got available to me." This is how I'm going to play, and you don't fit that. So you're going to get moved on, and it needs that kind of like ruthlessness, but also the, the back end from the board and possibly the the patience for the support. And if you're not going to get that patience for the support, I think that's where the board comes in and says, I'll be back, this guy, and what he's doing. Um, and I, I think I've mentioned it before with regards to like some of the more like popular players. So like, I don't think that anyone's necessarily safe. So like, like Newell, I could see as potentially being so... As Colin mentioned there, I think it's with regards to Jago. I don't think Newell necessarily fits into this team as much, or sorry, the way that Montgomery wants to play as much as I like him as a footballer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's I think that's true. I think we're probably going to see the end of perhaps Stevenson at the end of the season. I don't know what the future holds for Paul Hannon. And I think that and I think rather than going through like a continuous cycle of what Colin described of managers getting someone else's team compounded by someone else's team and then having to perform miracles with it somehow do better than the guys before. Um, there needs to be that constant movement. There needs to be that constant evolution and improvement in the team. And it's it, it's it's really unpalatable for the football supporter because we want, like we want, because we've not had any sort of success for well, it's seven years, seven years now, six, seven years. We want something to get excited about. We want something to be happy about. And as long as you keep getting shitey managers, sorry, as long as you keep changing that manager, you just compound the problem that you have and you never address it. And that's where it comes back to those lack of identity, um, the culture problem, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And you, you have that, that thing where they come in and they want to have a look at a new manager comes in and wants to have a look at the players that are already there. And then mm-hmm. kind of one of them does well. Hips are bad that... Uh, at jumping like early and extending folks' contracts as well. Yeah. So you have other players maybe going through a wee sweet spell, and then we give them a four year deal. And actually, yeah. they that's like a bump in their form rather than what their performance is like. And then you you kind of are left carrying that contract for a while. See, with regards to someone like Levitt, well, we're, we're talking about other players in the squad, and I didn't mean this from a, a a critical point of view. But his contract, like he's only been with the club now since what last summer. Is are there not rules that prevent the player from being moved on to another club within such a, a short it's, period of time? Is it two three, clubs or two clubs, clubs in the same? Like three clubs in in, uh, in a year, I think it is. Yeah, so I don't know. If, like I don't know if Hibs would be trying to move him on if there's any sort of like potential interest. But of course, if you move him on, you probably need to have a replacement coming in because, as we know, Hibs are already short on on numbers in the squad. 
Mm -hmm. Ah, it's a tricky one. Like it's, uh, and I suppose this is where you you hope like the the investment that comes because that's what you need to do a rebuild is money and budget because yeah. if you're going to carry players that are on contracts, if uh, and no play them, if you can't move them on, then you need another player that's better than them. So you're you're paying that yeah. wage plus another one, uh, to, to, for a better player. So you need money, and that that's hopefully where you know the the investment comes in and. And helps us out. Anyway, right, without time, we was going to talk about the full investment because that's uh, rumoured to have been done and dusted and announced imminently. So either, uh, depending on what rumour you believe, either tomorrow, which is Friday, or uh, next week at some point. Subject to any GM or any Subject GM. Subject to uh, an, yeah, an yeah. EGM. But I would imagine that's pretty much a formality, isn't it? Like you, you were thinking, yeah. Might be um, revealed if they're not carrying drinks on a train. Well, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> You know, cue to the right side of the bar. <laughs> Aye. Uh, right. Thanks. Uh, that's us out today. Thanks very much for uh, for tuning in. Good chat as always, Colin and John. Appreciate uh, your time tonight. Uh, thanks for subscribing, and we will see you next time.